For many of us, mansions have always sounded like something straight out of a movie, with their spacious bedrooms, sprawling landscapes, luxurious amenities and extravagant soirees, they've magnetized those fortunate enough to afford them. And while everyone definitely wants a place to call home, no one wants to go broke while doing it. From exorbitant maintenance expenses to unsettling ghost stories linked to some houses, here are 20 mansions no one wants to buy, even for as low as dollar one. Bubble Palace. What if you could live in a bubble surrounded by the beauty of nature and the splendor of art? Well, that is what you get at the Bubble Palace, or Le Palais Boule, as it is called in French. It is the most extraordinary and costly property in Europe. The magnificent house was owned by the late Pierre Cardin, a renowned fashion designer who used it as his vacation home and a stage for spectacular parties and shows. This villa boasts 29 rooms designed in a bubble style, spread across six levels. Offering a 180-degree Mediterranean view, the Bubble Palace spans nearly 13,000 square feet. It features a panoramic lounge, swimming pools, and an auditorium with seating for 500 people, all overlooking the bay. The Bubble Palace has hosted numerous significant events, including the Dior Resort Show and the James Bond 40th birthday celebration. Additionally, the estate has been occasionally rented to private individuals, commercials, and other events for a reported $33,000 per day. The architectural wonder was first placed on the market in 2017 for a staggering $383,790 dollars but failed to attract a buyer. Now, following Cardin's death in 2020, the Bubble Palace is making a return to the market with an even more elevated price tag of $456 million. However, no one seems to want this house despite its one-of-a-kind features. This is perhaps due to the price being on the high side, or the fact that the new owner will be restricted from altering the fundamental structure of the house post-purchase. Or better still, maybe no one wants to shell out $456 million for a house that looks like it belongs on the set of a children's TV show, The New Jersey Watcher Home. The New Jersey Watcher Home is one to send chills down the spine of even the most courageous. If you don't believe me, then ask the Broaders family. The Broaders family bought this six-bedroom mansion at 657 Boulevard in 2014, hoping to live their dream life. The house also features four fireplaces and four baths, but soon after they moved in, they started receiving letters from someone who claimed to have been watching the house and all its occupants since the early 1920s. In fact, the sender of the letter who simply addressed himself as the Watcher, knew their names. The New Jersey Watcher home, as it came to be known, had been built in the early 1900s. The Watcher also claimed to be part of a long line of Watchers who had inherited the duty of observing the house. The recurrent letters became more and more threatening and disturbing as they began mentioning things like blood, bones, and secrets hidden in the walls. These events greatly terrified the Broaders family, and they tried to sell the house, but no one wanted to buy it as the story of the Watcher became a sensation in the neighborhood and beyond. The house was also the inspiration for the popular Netflix series The Watcher in 2022. The Broaders family eventually managed to sell the house in 2023, but for just over $900,000, losing more than half a million dollars. Even though the house went through a series of renovations, the new owners never moved in and have been able to sell it or even rent it. The Priestly House Canton. Imagine living in a grand mansion that reflects the elegance and charm of the Old South. That was the reality for Dr. James Priestley, the first doctor of Canton, Mississippi, who built his dream home on a vast estate of 5,000 acres in 1852. The Priestley Mansion is a masterpiece of southern antebellum Greek revival architecture, with a majestic facade and a spacious interior. The mansion boasts a swimming pool, library, office, parlor, and music room, where Dr. Priestley and his family entertained their guests with grace and style. Dr. Priestley loved his home so much that he kept enhancing it until the early 1900s, creating a legacy of beauty and history. Sadly, after his death, his family left the mansion empty until they sold it in 1996. However, in 2002, the Macmillan family who purchased the house and resided there for several years soon realized that they shared the space with other people, or in this case, ghosts. The house is also believed to be visited by ghosts and other malevolent spirits as the tale goes. And that's not all. Some folks have even reported spotting the see-through form of Dr. Priestley and a woman's ghostly figure on the porch. Others also mentioned hearing scary moans and screams all over the house. Presently, the house underwent an extensive restoration and has been listed again for $1 million. Even with a lowered price, it remains unsold.
The Chrismark Castle. The Chrismark Castle is a stunning example of Gothic architecture that stands out among the typical houses of Connecticut. It is the dream project of Christopher Mark, a descendant of steel tycoon Clayton Mark, who wanted to create a fairy tale home for his daughters. The stunning castle took seven years to build and looks more like a gravel version of Disneyland. The castle is set on over 400 acres of land and features a 30-acre pond, a moat, a dungeon, and numerous turrets. The interior is decorated with furniture and fittings collected from Europe over 30 years, as well as custom-made pieces crafted in Mark's own metal and wood shop. The Chris Mark Castle also has nine bedrooms, seven full bathrooms, 12 fireplaces, a greenhouse, a private theater, an underground auditorium, and a cinema. However, despite its impressive features and history, the castle has not been able to attract a serious buyer. The castle was first listed for $45 million in 2014, then reduced to $35 million in 2016 before being taken off the market. It was relisted in November 2022 for $35 million again, but then raised to $60 million in 2023. The reason for the price hike was that Mark had decided to build another castle elsewhere and needed more funds for his new project. As to why no one has yet to swipe right on the estate, it is speculated that the castle's high price tag, remote location, and eccentric style could be some of the factors. The castle is located in Woodstock, a rural town in northeastern Connecticut that is about an hour away from Hartford and two hours away from Boston. The castle has gained some popularity on social media, especially on TikTok, where Mark's youngest daughter Christina runs an account that showcases the castle's features and history. Updown Court. With a staggering expanse of 50,000 square feet, Updown Court is one of the most expensive houses on the real estate market in the United Kingdom. In fact, this house surpasses the size of Buckingham Palace. Constructed in 2002, this neoclassical mansion boasts a Californian design, and it was formerly owned by Prince Sami Gade of Egypt. Updown Court is nestled on 58 acres of land and features 103 distinct rooms, including a 3,000-bottle wine cellar, a 50 seat cinema, a bowling alley, a squash court, a sauna, a gym, five swimming pools, and a panic room. It then comes as no surprise that this opulent mansion stands at a price tag of $138 million. However, despite the grandeur of the up-down court, nobody seems inclined to purchase it, and it is easy to see why. To begin with, the property has fallen behind on a $50 million mortgage payment even after its previous owner, Leslie Allen Verco, spent 30 million euros in renovating the property. In addition to this, the annual maintenance cost costs of the house have escalated to an astounding 1.5 million euros thanks to its enormous size. So with no buyer in sight, Updown Court is currently under the control of Ireland's National Asset Management Agency, Old Liu Family Mansion. The Old Liu Family Mansion in Taiwan is a popular, mysterious and fascinating place. And just like the other houses on this list, no one wants it. The Old Liu Family Mansion is a three-story red brick building that was built in 1929 by Liu Rongyu, a wealthy merchant and landowner. The mansion has a baroque style and was once a luxurious residence with many amenities, such as a spacious courtyard, a well, a fireplace, and a balcony. However, the mansion was abandoned by the Liu family in the early 1950s, shortly after the end of Japanese colonial rule. Since then, the mansion has been left to decay and be overtaken by nature. Interestingly, the mansion is also known as the Mingxiong Ghost House because of the many legends and stories that surround it. One of the most popular stories is that the maid of the house had an affair with Liu Rongyu, the master of the house. When the wife discovered the affair, she made the maid's life miserable until she committed suicide by throwing herself down the well. The maid's ghost then returned to haunt the Liu family every night until they could not bear it anymore and fled the house. Another story is that some Japanese soldiers who stayed in the house during World War II killed each other in a frenzy of gunfire after seeing a mysterious figure in the night. Yet another story is that some Taiwanese soldiers who occupied the house after the war died of a mysterious illness. Despite the horrors each of these legends speak of, the mansion is now a popular destination for thrill-seekers and ghost hunters who dare to enter the house and explore its dark secrets. Pillars Estate Pillars Estate is a grand manor in New York that sits on a two-acre lot and covers an impressive 7,200 128 square feet. It is a stunning example of Greek architecture, with six bedrooms, six baths, five fireplaces, and a ballroom. It also has a parlor and a library for more refined pursuits. Despite its historic charm and lavish renovations, it has been on the market since 2015 with no takers. It was first offered for $1 million, but was eventually cut down to half that price. But still, no one wants the house. The estate was built in the 1880s and still preserves the original architectural details from the post-Civil War era, while also incorporating modern upgrades. While the house welcomes you with majestic lions at the entrance, it also surprises 
surprises you with mysterious voices inside. In fact, the house is a perfect place for a spooky tale. According to the owner, Tony McMurtry, who bought the property in 2006 for $52,000, Pillars Estate is a house where those living in it will not be alone. Whispers of ghostly occurrences started when the house was being renovated. During this time, a family member spotted a child gazing out from a basement window while seated outside the house. Shortly thereafter, a worker also claimed to have heard a child's voice speaking to him. In addition to these, a woman dressed in white has been observed relaxing in a bedroom. While both homeowners and staff members have reported peculiar footsteps trailing them on the staircase, currently Pillars Estate holds a special use permit that allows it to host events like weddings. It has also earned a spot on the haunted history trail of New York State, the Victorian Folly. Standing at a staggering 218 feet, the Victorian Folly, or the Sway Tower located in Hampshire, is a marvel of engineering and architecture. In fact, it is the world's tallest building made of unreinforced concrete. The previous owners have done a good job transforming the tower from a humble shed to a lavish multi-million pound home over the years. Along the way, they also experimented with different ventures, such as a restaurant and a hotel, but none of them were profitable. So this one-of-a-kind property is now on the market. But despite its impressive features and a 2.5 million pounds price tag, the tower house has been struggling to find a buyer who can appreciate its unique charm. The main reason for this is the daunting 330 steps that lead to the top of the tower, where four bedrooms, three ensuite bathrooms, and a 60-foot swimming pool await the adventurous. No doubt anyone who dares to live in this high-rise property must have a good grip on heights. Nevertheless, the 14-story tower offers incredible views of the surrounding countryside, and to make moving things around easy with all the staircases, the windows can be removed to get the furniture in and out of the house. But that's not all. The best part of this whole deal is that whoever buys this property also gets to enjoy a yearly telecommunications income of £35,000, as the Victorian Folly is used by the emergency services and two mobile phone providers. The 14-storey tower house is a masterpiece that also comes with its own crypt, so the buyer can definitely be rest assured of staying in the building forever. Sounds good, but only if you like the idea of that. Linwood Hall Linwood Hall is a historic mansion in Philadelphia that was built by the wealthy industrialist Peter A. B. Widener in 1900. It is one of the largest remaining neoclassical revival architecture from the Gilded Age, with 110 rooms, a huge art gallery, a ballroom large enough for 1,000 guests, a swimming pool, carpentry and upholstery studios, and an electrical power plant. The mansion was once the home of the Widener family, who were among the richest and most influential people in America. However, the mansion also saw tragedy and loss, as Widener lost his son and grandson in the Titanic disaster in 1912 and died himself in 1915. Following his death, the mansion has been mostly vacant and neglected for decades, changing hands several times and facing legal and financial troubles. It was sold to various religious groups, who failed to maintain it properly, and sold off many of its interior details and furnishings. In fact, the previous owner of the estate, the First Korean Church of New York, tried to declare the property as a seminary to lower property taxes, which unfortunately did not succeed. So Linwood Hall was put on the market for $11 million in 2019, but no one wanted to buy it because of its high cost and poor condition. Real estate agents have also indicated that annual maintenance expenses for the property range from $3 million to $7 million. It would also take as much as about $50 million to restore the mansion to its former glory. The estate was finally sold to a non-profit organization called Linwood Hall Preservation Foundation in 2023, which plans to restore it and open it to the public as a cultural site. Peter Grant Mansion. Peter Grant Mansion is a massive house located on the shore of Lake Temiskaming in Ontario, Canada. It was built in the 2000s by Peter Grant, a forest industry mogul who had a vision of creating a palace on the lake. The house was supposed to be the largest house in Canada, with a size of 65,000 square feet. It was designed to have waterfalls, an art gallery, a golf course, and a huge boathouse. The house was also equipped with modern amenities such as a home theatre, a gym, and a spa. The house was meant to be a showcase of Grant's wealth and success as well as a retreat for his family and friends. However, the house was never completed or lived in by Grant or anyone else. The reason is unclear, but some speculate that Grant ran into financial troubles. The house was listed for sale in 2010 for $25 million, but it did not attract any buyers. A few years later, it was bought by a Toronto-based company that did not disclose its plans for the property. Since then, the house has been sitting empty and decaying, becoming an eyesore for the local community. The current owners have done little to maintain or secure the property, except for installing some security cameras. They have also failed to pay property taxes for several years, and
and the municipality has threatened to sell the property for taxes. Grano Loma. Granot Loma is a huge log cabin on over 5,000 acres along Lake Superior. It is the most expensive home in Michigan and also the biggest log cabin in the world. This massive mansion was built in the 1920s by Louis Graverate Kaufman, a General Motors executive and his wife, who loved to entertain their guests. In fact, the name of the estate was formed by putting together some letters from the names of Kaufman's first three kids and his wife's name. Granot Loma is not your typical cabin. Little wonder it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1991. This cabin covers about 26,000 square foot and has 23 bedrooms and four other buildings on the property. It also contains many paintings and artifacts that reflect the Kaufman's taste and wealth. The house also cost an amazing $5 million when it was completed in 1923, equivalent to $70 million in 2016. After the death of the couple in the early 1940s, their daughter remained in the home but left in the 1950s. Grano Loma was then abandoned for a long time until it went on the market at an asking price of $40 million. However, despite its grandeur and history, this magnificent house has been on the market for years without any buyers. The main reason for this can be attributed to its old-fashioned interior, filled with taxidermy covering all the walls. It's also been estimated that fixing the house would cost millions. Let's not forget to mention the secluded location of Grano Loma that doesn't appeal to many, since the closest city is a 200-mile drive away. And even though the price was later slashed to $20 million, no one still seems to be interested in this remote and outdated mansion, Starrett House. Who would say no to a home that has 11 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, and a magnificent 70-foot dome tower adorned with paintings of the Four Seasons? I wouldn't, but maybe I shouldn't be too hasty. Nestled in the heart of Port Townsend's vibrant uptown district, this gorgeous Queen Anne-styled mansion is a stone's throw away from the ancient marketplace, the cultural museums, the lively bars, and the delicious restaurants. The Anne Starrett Mansion is a masterpiece of George Starrett and his beloved Anne, who built it in 1889. The stunning mansion boasts a three tier spiral staircase that leads to the soaring 70-foot tower. It is also furnished with antiques and plush fabrics and equipped with a fire suppression system and fur floors. Also, in an effort to utilize these facilities, the property was transformed into a boutique hotel. However, it was later closed down due to a lack of visitors or potential buyers. Now, while you would have thought this colorful property is everything anyone with a spare $1.5 million would love to own, don't be so sure as there's a small catch to this house. Or maybe not so small, depending on your perspective. Well, people who have visited the Anne Starrett Mansion say they have witnessed ghost sightings of a red-haired woman, believed to be Anne herself, as well as her husband George. Some even mention seeing the couple's nanny staring at them from mirrors in addition to unexplained noises at night. Spooky, right? S.K. Pierce Mansion. The S.K. Pierce Mansion spans a daunting 6,661 square feet, and it is another haunted house that no one wants to buy. The Pierce Mansion is named after its owner, Sylvester Knowlton Pierce, who built the magnificent property between 1873 and 1875. Pierce was a prominent businessman in Gardner, Massachusetts. His splendid residence, located at 4 West Broadway, has a four-story tower atop a mansard roof and 11-foot ceilings. The interior also comes with exquisite woodwork and 10 bedrooms and 2.5 bathrooms. Pierce ran a flourishing chair factory across the street from his majestic mansion, which became one of the city's landmarks. Unfortunately, only two weeks after moving in, Pierce's wife Susan passed away from a flesh-eating bacterial infection and a few years later, S.K. Pierce himself died in the house, closely followed by three other deaths. So in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the Pierce Mansion fell into disrepair and abandonment. The estate also came to be known as the most haunted house in the state. Stories of eerie noises, ghostly apparitions and frightening figures circulated, deterring anyone from approaching the mansion. In fact, the couple who owned the home between 2008 and 2015 only lived there for a mere two years before feeling compelled to leave the house. At a certain juncture, the house was listed for sale at a mere $329,000, which is cheaper than a standard three-bedroom house in the U.S. However, following an extensive restoration effort, new owners acquired the property in April 2015, but not to live there. Instead, the S.K. Pierce Mansion was opened up for historical tours and overnight stays after the renovations were completed. Villa Maggio Villa Maggio is a stunning property located in California's Coachella Valley, surrounded by majestic mountains and desert landscapes. The villa was built in 1967 by the legendary singer and actor Frank Sinatra, who named it after his character in the film From Here to Eternity. The 10-acre property is a wood-shingled A-frame dwelling that boasts five bedrooms, six bathrooms, and seven fireplaces. The villa also features two kitchens, a den, a pool house, a guest house, a tennis court, two saunas, and a helicopter pad. Villa Maggio was Sinatra's secluded retreat 
Street for 12 years, where he entertained his famous friends from the Rat Pack and other celebrities. Now, the villa is currently on the market for $4.25 million, which is a bargain considering its historical and architectural value. However, the villa has not found a buyer yet, despite being listed several times in the past 14 years. For one, Villa Maggio is located in a remote area, far from the main attractions and amenities of Palm Desert and Palm Springs. The property is also situated on a high plateau, which makes it difficult to access by car but provides a breathtaking mountain view. Then again, the villa is in dire need of renovations and modernization to meet the standards and expectations of today's buyers. Let's not forget the other possible competitors that could be coming from other luxury properties in the area, such as Twin Palms, Sinatra's other Palm Springs home with a piano-shaped pool, which is available as a vacation rental. Nevertheless, Villa Maggio is a unique and beautiful property that offers a rare opportunity to own a piece of history and enjoy a desert oasis. And it is still waiting for someone who will appreciate its value even though it is in the middle of nowhere. Charming Forge Mansion. Charming Forge Mansion is a historic stone mansion located in Wimmelsdorf, Pennsylvania. It was built in 1749 by Baron William Henry Stiegel, a famous ironmaster and glassmaker. The mansion features seven bedrooms, four bathrooms, seven functional fireplaces, and original woodwork dating back to the colonial era. It is a fine example of Georgian architecture and craftsmanship, with fluted columns, crown molding, and elegant details. Spanning 48.5 acres of land, the mansion's grounds encompass a carriage barn, a summer kitchen, an oven, and an additional stone dwelling. The property also has a scenic view of Tulpehocken Creek, which was once part of the Union Canal that connected Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. The antique mansion went through several extensive renovations in 1994, when modern amenities such as radiant heat and central air were added. Charming Forge Mansion is currently for sale for $825,000, but the house is especially for thrill-seekers with a love for old homes who also don't mind meeting a few ghosts. Yeah, you heard that right. This Georgian mansion is rumored to be haunted by several ghosts, some of whom even date back to colonial times. According to local legend, the mansion is haunted by a woman who cries in the halls, waiting for her lover who died on his way to see her. There were also reports of sounds believed to be made by German prisoners of war who were held captive in the basement during the American Revolution. Some people also claim to hear the footsteps of Stiegel himself, who went bankrupt and lost his home in 1784. Although the current owner of the mansion who lived in the house for 15 years, claims he's had no experience of any paranormal activity. Some guests of his guests have reported feeling uneasy or sensing a presence in the house. Aside from these, the mansion also has high utility bills and taxes, which deters potential buyers who are looking for a more economical or eco-friendly home. So, for over 15 years, the house remained on the market until it was eventually sold for $650,000. The Aubrey Lewis House Aubrey Lewis was a well-regarded figure in Montclair, New Jersey. Before his death, he collaborated with the FBI, achieved All-American athlete status, and also held an executive position at a major company. Aubrey, together with his wife Anne and their five children, resided in the historic Lewis home at 44 Pleasant Avenue in Montclair, New Jersey. This nearly 100-year-old residence spanned 3,900 square feet and boasted six bedrooms. After Lewis passed away in 2001, his house lingered on the plot for two long decades, and the town was at a loss about what to do with it. A failed attempt to declare the land a historic site further left it in limbo. Eventually, in 2017, the local government resolved to sell the house for a measly $10. The council even sweetened the pie by offering as much as $10,000 as a move-in bonus to whoever would become the new owner. Sounds like a good deal, right? However, no one wanted this piece of historic house because it came with a catch. The buyer had to relocate the house to a different place, which would cost a fortune. Moving the house alone would require an extra $200,000 not to mention the additional expenses of purchasing a nearby plot. And so, after a prolonged period of waiting during which the house stood unclaimed and its future uncertain, the town ultimately decided to demolish the house, clearing the way for a new development to take its place, the Holston Party Penthouse. Situated in the posh Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York, this penthouse gained fame as a popular party spot during the 1970s, welcoming numerous well-known individuals as its guests. The Holston Party Penthouse is a stunning 7 1,500 square foot pad with soaring ceilings, a chic sunken living room, a cozy guest suite, and a spacious terrace with a brown glass facade. It was once the playground of Roy Holston Froick, a legendary fashion designer who hobnobbed with the Studio 54 crowd in the 1970s. Holston threw epic parties at his penthouse with stars like Liza Minnelli, Andy Warhol, and Truman Capote. 
They also indulged in sex, drugs and rock and roll at his glamorous home. Halston parted with the penthouse in 1990 before he passed away. The new owners then faced a tough challenge selling it after renovating it. They put it on the market for $38 million in 2011, but slashed it to $24 million later. Still, no one seemed to bite because of Halston's scandalous image and eccentric tastes. At last, in 2018, fashion designer Tom Ford snagged the penthouse for $18 million. It is, however, a mystery if he resides in the house or just collects it as part of his portfolio. Tudor-style homes in Boston, Edison, Detroit. If you are looking to own a Tudor-style home with seven bedrooms, 69 windows and an indoor fountain, well, no better place to find such than in Boston, Edison, Detroit. There are also as many as 400 options to choose from, with each selling for as low as $1,000. These Tudor-style homes were first constructed in the historic Boston, Edison neighborhood during the 1920s. The area is characterized by its wide boulevards, generously sized lots, houses dating back to the early 20th century, and of course, grand mansions. In fact, the dimensions of the mansions in this neighborhood are about 4,200 square feet or more. But hold on, one thing we can all agree on is that these houses sound too good to be true. And yes, they do. You see, these houses require extensive renovation before anyone can live in them. Buyers will have their work cut out for them fixing windows, doors, fireplaces, and hardwood floors. In addition to these, the mansions will also need the electrical wiring, plumbing, kitchen, and bathrooms to be replaced. Luckily, one of these Tudor-style homes located at 2224 W Boston Boulevard was recently renovated with all the windows on the first floor restored as part of a workshop conducted by the Michigan Historic Preservation Network. The house is also now equipped with Puabic tile baths, an interior fountain and a recreation room in the basement. However, there is still a long way to go before these mansions are restored to their days of glory. Four-bedroom house in Jordan. Nestled between a hill and a highway down in Jordan, Minnesota is a four-bedroom house that is up for sale. And the best part, it's for free. In 2011, Barbara Coughlin inherited the house from her grandmother. She is currently on the lookout for a buyer and not just any buyer. She specifically wants someone who shares an interest in preserving its historical significance. Interestingly, Coquelin's grandmother was the first female mayor of Jordan and moved into the house when she was in her 80s. Describing the architecture as pretty outsider, Coquelin acknowledges the absence of vintage charm within the house. The property has unique features, such as the orange countertops and design elements representative of an era when aesthetic tastes seem to be lacking. While Coquelin already tried upgrading the four-bedroom property into a complex, the sheer luck of the house being located between a hill and a highway made it completely impossible to create a parking area. But this isn't even the actual bone of contention with this house. Remember that bit about the house being free? Well, that's not exactly the case. You see, just like the Aubrey Lewis house, this eye-catching home with its orange countertops would have to be moved once it gets a new owner. The relocation itself comes with a price tag of $20,000, and that's not all. An additional $150,000 will be needed for repairs once the house is in its new location. The house also lacks electrical and plumbing facilities, which explains why it was converted into a storage unit before the death of the previous owner, Schwepper Mansion, Lake Forest, Illinois. The Schwepper Mansion is a haunted house that hides in the woods by Lake Michigan in Lake Forest, Illinois. It is a Gothic-style mansion with 21,000 square feet of space, 12 bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and a 400-foot-long beach. It has welcomed many royal and noble guests, such as the Duke of Windsor, in its century-long history. The mansion was a gift from Marshall Fields to his daughter, Laura Shedd, in 1917 when she got married to Charles Schwepper. Twenty years after their wedding, Laura passed away from a heart attack. The tales recount that she left most of her belongings belongings to her kids and little to nothing for her husband. And barely four years after her death, Charles committed suicide by shooting himself. Ever since then, the house has been the scene of several murders, and the ghosts of the victims are said to still haunt it. The house has been empty for about 50 years, except, of course, for the occasional ghost sighting. Despite the scary history of the Schwepper mansion, a family still boldly took over the house in the 1980s and fixed it up. They hoped to sell it for $18 million, but they met with no success. They also went as far as reducing the price again and again for 10 years until it came down to $8.5 million. To date, the Schwepper Mansion is still on the market, waiting for a brave buyer who can handle its horrors. Which of these houses do you find the most intriguing? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Also, for more captivating videos like this, click on one of the cards currently displayed on your screen.